Hello everyone, this is Deepak Singhal. Welcome you all to the channel of Vidya Guru. And in this video of Current Affairs, we'll be talking about, uh, means this is my third edition of the April month. And the important topics which I'll be discussing in this video are like NMC approves Nagaland to set up its first medical college. Some mishappening which happened with uh, Elon Musk, SpaceX company and the rocket name is Starship, which is the world largest rocket. And it exploded like when it exploded, how it exploded, we'll be discussing that. Deepika Mishra, which becomes the first woman Indian Air Force officer to get the Gallantry Award because of the work she did in the floods. Harun's Global Unicorn Index 2023 and something about Kerala to have the water budget. So let's start the bulletin. And if you guys are listening to me for the first time, then it is just my humble request to kindly press the subscribe button, which you will have towards the right bottom of my video it will not take any even a single penny from you but it just does a favor that whenever my video will go live you guys will get the notification uh instantly so let's start shelly singh she has qualified for the asian game and even our union youth affair and sports minister mr anurag singh thakur has uh, has congratulated shelly singh on her victory and when she qualified, actually, she won the women's long jump event, which held in Bangalore on 19th of April. And with a personal best of 6.76 meters, she is now the second highest long jumper in the history of India after, after Anju Bobby, Anju Bobby George, and who, who is also her idol and the mentor. So she is Miss uh, Shelly Singh. Then we have the second important news. This is about NMC, which is called National Medical Commission, which has approved the setting up of Nagaland Institute of Medical Sciences and Research, which will become India's first medical college in the northeastern state of Nagaland. Uh, something about the uh, something about this college, then, my dear, this college will have a capacity of 100 seats for the MBBS students and 85 seats will be reserved for Nagaland origin, while the 15 seats will be open for applicants from all the other states. Something about this Nagaland First Medical College. Then we have this mishappening which happened with SpaceX. SpaceX next generation Starship, which is the world's biggest rocket. It actually exploded during its first test flight to space near Brownsville, Texas. Actually, what happened and what is the speciality of this Starship? The Starship uses an engine which is called Raptor engine. It is a reusable methane oxygen staged combustion engine that powers the starship system the super heavy rocket is fully reuse uh, is fully reusable it is fully reu uh, reusable and will re-enter the earth atmosphere to land back at the launch site it is fully reusable transportation system which is designed to carry both the crew and the cargo to earth orbit to moon mars and even beyond this is what mr elon musk said it is world's most powerful launch vehicle ever developed, which is capable of carrying around 150 metric tons, fully reusable. Actually, the word fully reusable is something which is most highlighted. To make the Starship reusable, reducing the cost of space flight, to carry both astronauts and cargo for Earth orbit, Moon, Mars, and maybe even beyond. Something about SpaceX, this company sent its first two astronauts to International Space Station on 30th May 2020 aboard the SpaceX uh, rocket which named as Dragon. SpaceX was founded by Mr. Elon Musk, who is a South African-born businessman and entrepreneur. Then we have the next important news, which is talking about ISRO. Uh, the ISRO successfully launched its PSLV C-55 mission on 22nd of April, sending the two Singapore-made satellites into the space. The satellites were the launch vehicle lifted off at its scheduled time from ISRO's Satish Dhawan Space Center in Andhra Pradesh, Sri Harikota. It carried two satellites. It is a dedicated commercial mission undertaken by ISRO through its new commercial arm, which is called New Space India Limited. Something about New Space India Limited, it was created just to handle the commercial business of ISRO. While the ISRO will be engaged uh, with the, uh, I would say, satellite programs of India, 
But on the other hand, this new space India Limited will take care of all the commercial business that the ISRO can get. Of these two satellites, we have the Telios, or oh, sorry, Telios 2, which is a primary one, and the Lumilite 4, which is a co passenger satellite. The uh, both of these satellites were about 741 kg and 16 kg, uh, I would say, uh, heavy respectively. The Telios 2 was developed under the partnership between Government of Singapore and Singapore Technologies Engineering Limited. It aims to enhance the maritime security of the state. This mission also marks the 57th flight of our PSLV. And I can rightfully say that PSLV is the work horse of ISRO. Means it is the most trusted rocket that ISRO could have ever developed. The failure, the failure of this means the failure, uh, I, I would say the success ratio, first of all, success ratio of PSLV is around 99%. And only 1% chance is there that the PSLV could ever fail. So 99% success ratio we have as far as PSLV is concerned. Something about ISRO, we established it on 15th of August, 1969. It is a National Space Agency of India. It launches all its space rockets from Satish Dhawan Space Center in Sri Harikota, Andhra Pradesh. I have a question for you. Why all, why all the space centers or uh, why all the space rocket launch centers? Are located close to equator. Are located close to equator. This is something which I just want to ask you. Then the headquarters is Bengaluru. Chairman is M Somnath, S Somnath, and the founder is Vikram Sarabhai. So kindly ping me your answers in the comment section. Yes. So the next current affair is over Karnataka. The Karnataka got the national award for Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bhima Yojana. My dear, Fasal Bhima Yojana is an insurance scheme for the crops and Karnataka was recognized as the leading state in implementing this scheme during a national conference in Chhattisgarh. So this award was accepted by Shiva Yogi Kalasad, who is a Secretary Department of Agriculture, Karnataka government. According to the agricultural department official, an amount of 687.4 crore has been settled for 5.66 lakh farmers with the pending claims since 2018. So something about Karnataka. Bengaluru, which is the startup capital of India, also called the Silicon Valley of India, is the capital of Karnataka. Chief minister of this state is Baswaraja Bomai and the governor is Thavar Chand Gehlot. Heading forward to the next current affair. It is about the wing commander Deepika Mishra and it is something to be proud of. Yes, we are heading towards women empowerment in a right direction because she has become the first women officer of Indian Air Force to receive this gallantry award, which is called Vayu Sena Medal <clears throat> for her extraordinary courage, which she displayed during a flood relief relation, sorry, operation in Madhya Pradesh. The Air Marshal, sorry, the Air Indian Air Force Chief, the Air Chief Marshal Vivek Ram Chaudhary presented this Youth Seva Medal at the Vayu Sena Auditorium, Suborto Park, New Delhi, to Madam Deepika Sharma, who is the first Indian Air Force officer to receive this gallantry award. Heading forward to Assam and Arunachal Pradesh, yes, something to <clears throat> something to be very. Uh, something, uh, this is something to be relief of, mean, sorry, this is something which is giving a greater relief as far as the Northeastern uh, state and the problem which is concerned with this region. So very recently, the boundary dispute between Assam and Arunachal Pradesh is now settled because under an uh, interstate boundary dispute commission was set up between two states on 21st of March and an agreement was signed in the presence of our Home Minister. Mr. Amit Shah. Yes. So this agreement was signed by chief ministers of both the states. From Assam side, we have Hemanta Biswa Sarma. And from Arunachal Pradesh side, we had Pema Khandu. In presence of the Union Home Minister, Amit Shah. The agreement between the two states will end this dispute, which is over 123 villages along the border. So now the question comes. 
so how much long border which is shared between assam and arunachal pradesh that is disputed so uh, after this agreement a detailed survey will be conducted by survey of india to determine the boundaries of two states and my dear this complete border is of 804.10 km with arunachal pradesh this state of arunachal pradesh was created in 1987 and since then the problem started according to arunachal pradesh several forest areas in the plains that traditionally belonged to the state of arunachal pradesh were unilaterally transferred to assam so that is the most important issue as a result of which the assam government contested this and the matter is now is in supreme court of india and one more thing you should be aware of whenever there is a dispute between state versus state then the matter is directly filed in the honorable supreme court of india there are three four types of cases that can be directly filed in supreme court for example in union versus state of india case if you want to file any case against the central government of india then the case is filed in supreme court state versus state union plus some states versus some states all these types of cases can directly be filed in the supreme court of india and it comes under the original jurisdiction of honorable supreme court of india heading forward to the harun global unicorn index and according to this report something to be proud of because india continues to be the world third largest country with the highest number of unicorns followed means following us and china as number 1 and number 2 respectively our edtech byju's worth 22 billion dollar top this list of indian unicorns followed by on demand delivery startup swiggy and fantasy sports platform travel that is stay finder dream 11 so byju's is the only indian unicorn among the top 10 biggest rises in the valuation since pre covid times india has a total of 138 unicorns out of which 70 were established by indian co-founders but their headquarters are located outside india while 68 are based in india the top 5 countries with most unicorns are usa china india uk and germany and very recently you should be aware of german some german newspaper has made mockery of india by showing the two trains on one train the cartoon showed china's bullet train and on the other side we had the indian train which is overpopulated because very recently the indian population has surpassed the population of china has become the most populous country in the world but uh, we are trying to respond germany in their own voice because it is actually the western propaganda whenever a asian economy whenever a asian country performs so well it happens with the western world so we should not be afraid of we should not be or it it should not sounding it should not be like uh, that we should not over react over these cartoons because when india uh, sent the mars mission the same kind of cartoon was also displayed uh, in the new york times of america so prime minister narendra modi inaugurated the first global buddhist summit in new delhi and the summit was hosted by ministry of culture in association with international buddhist confederation the summit was a two day event that brought together the eminent scholars union leaders religious practitioners from around the world theme for this summit was responses to contemporary challenges philosophy to paraxis heading forward to uh, the first global buddhist summit it was actually means this was organized in new delhi between 20 to 21st of april inaugurated by prime minister narendra modi and this is the theme which i have already covered and the aim is to enhance cultural diplomatic relations with other countries and mark the significance of india in buddhism because buddh bhagwan buddh who was born in lumbini which is in present day nepal and india is actually considered to be the land of this great uh, I, i would say the great preacher of the world gautam buddha and whatever he taught will be taught to you in my gs classes at vidya guru if you are still confuse that which institute you should go for then i would recommend that vidya guru is one of the finest institution in this country which gives you quality content as well as quality coaching for all the government examination if you guys are preparing for ssc cgl banking po or any anything else so what is buddhism in india it started in india about 2600 years ago and why this buddhism is in most of the parts of the world it is all because of uh, means according to some history it is all because of the efforts made by king ashoka 
So it is one of the most important religions of South and Southeast Asian countries. Gautam Buddha, the founder of this religion, was born in Lumbini in around six, sorry, 563 BC, and he belonged to Shakya clan. Gautam Buddha is considered to be the eighth incarnation of the ten incarnations of Lord Vishnu, and this is how the debate between Buddhism versus Hinduism got over in the Gupta times. Then we have Kerala. Kerala became, or oh, sorry, becomes the first state in India to adopt the water budget. Now, what is it? Because it is happening for the first time in this country. Because Kerala has devised this water budget in order to deal with the problem of water scarcity in summer. Despite the abundance of rivers, streams, backwaters, rainfall, many parts of Kerala face severe water scarcity during summer. The first phase of water budget covers around 94 gram panchayat in 15 block panchayats and the details were unveiled by the Kerala Chief Minister, Mr. Pinarai Vijayan. The water budget was prepared, sorry, will be prepared by the committee of various experts along with officials from Center for Water Resources Development and Management and the State Water Resources Department. This is how the Kerala has become the first state in the country to adopt the water budget. So other countries, sorry, other states of this country should also go for it as far as the water scarcity is concerned, especially if I talk about the Union Territory of Delhi, according to the Niti Aayog report of 2019, the groundwater resources of Delhi were supposed to be like finished off by the January of next year, means 2020, but it didn't. So uh, because it is an established fact that very soon the Union Territory and the capital of India will be facing this problem of water scarcity. So before we go and face this severe problem, the governments should be ready. Capital of Kerala is Thiruvanthapuram. Official bird is Great Hornbill. Governor is Arif Mohammad Khan, Chief Minister Pinarai Vijayan. And India's longest lake, Vimanad Lake, is in Kerala. Origin of rivers in Kerala, we have Periyar River, Pamba River, Chaliyar, and Chalakudi River. All these have the origins. All these rivers have origins in Kerala. Then we have El Murugan, who becomes the first union minister to visit India's first village. Yes. El Murugan, he is the union minister of state in Ministry of Fisheries and Animal Husbandry on 22nd of April, became the first central minister to visit India's first village, that is Awankhu. Awankhu is a village which is along India-Myanmar border in Nagaland's fake district. The union minister visited the International Trade Center at Awankhu fake. He hoped that the International Trade Center at Avanku would witness an increase in business activities due to the increase in trade volume and better connectivity. On the development of Pijuri in the state, Dr. Murugun said that the National Livestock Mission is supporting the entrepreneurs of Nagaland and strengthening the agricultural infrastructure and technology in this state. He also announced that 4.99 lakh rupees will be given in grant and will be allocated to fake district for screening the children's film in the district. Then we have something about Nagaland. This is the Northeast Indian state bordering Myanmar formed in 1963 on 1st of December. Capital is Kohima. Official language is English. Festivals are Hornbill Festival, Motsu Mong National Park is Intanki National Park. Some of the important wildlife centuries that the state possess are Fakim Wildlife Century, Puli Baji by a wildlife century, then we have Ranga Paha Reserve Forest. Chief Minister is Nifio Rio. Governor is Laga Nation. Official bird is Blitz uh, Tragopan. And the official animal is Gayal. Legislative Assembly of Nagaland consists of 60 seats. And only in this, like on 2nd of, if I'm not wrong, 2nd of March, the results of Nagaland were concluded because this year Nagaland had elections in the month of February. Results were concluded in March. Rajya Sabha seat is only one. Lok Sabha seat is only one. Largest city is Dimapur of this state. And the total number of district that Nagaland has, sorry, Nagaland has is 16. Then we have Asha Bhosle to be honored with Lata Dinanath Mangeshkar Award. Yes, on 24th of April. And the award ceremony will coincide with her father's death anniversary. The award was instituted by Mangeshkar Family and Trust in the memory of Lata Mangeshkar and is given to a person who has made a significant contribution to the nation, its people and society. Veteran Ghazal singer Pankaj Udas will also be honored with the Master Dinanath Mangeshkar Award for his contribution to Indian music. 
Gauri Theatres of Prashant Damle Fan Foundation will be given the Best Drama of the Year Award and their play Niyam Va Ati Lago. Sadhguru Seva Sun Trust will also be honoured for their social service. Uh, Granthali Prakashan will receive the Vag, Vag Vilasani Award for his contribution to literature. Actor-director Prasad Oak and actor Vidya Balan will both be presented with a special award for their contribution to cinema and theatre. So this is everything about the Lata Mangeshkar, Lata Mange, sorry, Lata Dinanath Mangeshkar Award. Then we have PM Gati Shakti and MP receives the PM's Award for Excellence. Yes, and MP stands for National Master Plan. The award was presented to the Department of Promotion of Internal and Trade, means DP, IIT, in the category of Innovation Central for successful implementation of the prestigious Pradhan Mantri Gati Shakti National Master Plan Program. What is this PM Gati Shakti initiative, guys? So it was launched in the year 2021 in the month of October to provide multimodal connectivity infrastructure to various economic zones. Economic zones like textile cluster, pharmaceutical cluster, defense corridor, electric, uh, electronic park, industrial corridor, fishing clusters, agri zone, will all be covered under this program to improve the connectivity. The plan was implemented on 21st of October, 2021. Then we have, what are the approach of PM Gati Shakti? It is driven by seven engines. That is railway, roads, ports, waterways, airport, mass transport, logistics infrastructure. Whereas logistics infrastructure is very important because logistics infrastructure decides the role whether our country is going to be a big part in the future or not, because the way we have to circumnavigate the complete Sri Lanka in order to reach the eastern coast of India, it's actually something which is taking time. So what else we are doing as far as the logistics infrastructure in the country is concerned? Logistics is the management of all the ships which are coming and uh, docking at our ports. Their timely arrival, departure, everything will be managed. Then we have India, which overtakes China to become the world's most populous country. I was talking about it because the data was released on 19th of April, United Nations by United Nations, and Germany mocked us over this. So we are just trying and thinking that how we could respond to Germany because, we, as I said, we should not be overreacting because India is already the fifth largest economy in the world, which is not being digested by most of the Western powers. According to United Nations data, India's population stands at 142.86 crore, while China's population is at 142.57 crore. According to a new report by United Nations Population Fund, the population between the age group of 10 to 19 years is 18%, 10 to 24 years is 26%, 15 to 64 years is the 68%, and above 65 years is the 7% of our total population. Kerala and Punjab have the largely elderly population, whereas Bihar and Uttar Pradesh have a large youth population. Something about United Nations uh, Population Fund, then my dear, it is a subsidiary organ of United Nations General Assembly established in 1967. And in 1987, it was officially renamed as United Nations Population Fund. The original abbreviation is UNFPA, which means United Nations Fund for Population Activities. It was retained. The report which has been published by UNFPA is the State of World Population Report. Then we have Harman Preet Kaur and Surya Kumar Yadav included in the Wisden Cricketers 2022 list. Yes, the Wisden Cricketers Almanac has released a list of top five cricketers of the year 2022, which includes Indian women team captain Harman Preet Kaur and 360 degree player Surya Kumar Yadav from the men's team. Apart from Kaur, the list also includes the names of Tom Blundell from New Zealand, Ben Fox from England, Daryl Mitchell from New Zealand, and Matthew Potts from England. Surya Kumar Yadav has been selected as the T20 cricketer of the year, whereas Harman Preet Kaur, she has created history by becoming the first woman to be named in the Wisden Cricketers of the Year list. Something to be proud of. Then we have Kenya, which has launched its first operational Earth Observatory, sorry, Earth Observation Satellite, that is TAIFA-1. 
on a rocket of Elon Musk rocket company SpaceX from Vandenberg Base in California on 15th of April 2023. The launch rocket carried about 50 payloads from various countries including Turkey under SpaceX rideshare program. The satellite primary purpose is to collect agricultural environmental data including floods, droughts, wild wildfires to help Kenya deal with the disaster management and food insecurity. Kenya is, in, uh, is an African country which is located towards the east of Africa. Capital is Nairobi, currency is Kenyan shilling, where the president is Mr. William Ruto. Then we have central government has recently notified the Animal Birth Control Rules 2023, which aims to address the Supreme Court guidelines in a writ petition by Animal Welfare Board of India and the people for elimination of stray troubles. Actually, the Supreme Court of India has specially mentioned that transfer of dogs cannot be allowed. But under the new rules, the local bodies, including municipalities, municipal corporations, panchayats are responsible for carrying out the animal birth control program. Yes, this animal birth control program uh, aims to sterilize and vaccinate the stray dogs, reduce their population and address the animal welfare issues. The rules provide guidelines on how to handle the conflicts between human and stray dogs without relocating the dogs. Because I have already mentioned, the Supreme Court specially mentioned that transfer of dogs cannot be allowed. Then we have Boria Majumda released a new title, new book titled Sachin at the rate 50, celebrating a maestro. Yes, very recently, our Tendulkar, uh, he has, uh, means he has gone 50 year old. He celebrated his 50th birthday. And the book has been conceptually designed and curated by Majumdar with a special book, sorry, special back cover note penned by Gulzar. It will be officially released on 24th of April, which is Tendulkar's 50th birthday. Other books. Basu Chatterjee and the Middle of a Road Cinema, that is Anirudh Bhattacharji, Gandhi Politics and Sect by Piyush Babele, A Matter of the Heart Education in India, Anurag Behar, Bipin, The Man Behind the Uniform, Rachna Bisavat Rawat, Mundaka Upanishad, The Gateway to Eternity by Dr. Karan Singh. Then we have the World's Earth Day which is celebrated every year on 22nd of April to show support for environmental protection. For the first time, it was celebrated in 1970. And actually, the purpose is to create awareness among people about environmental protection. The event is celebrated by over 1 billion people in over 193 countries. And the theme was invest in our planet. Then we have Civil Services Day on 21st of April. Uh, yes, my dear. The first event was organized, I mean, the first event related to Civil Services Day was organized in 2006 at Vigyan Bhavan, New Delhi. And since then, every 21st of April is celebrated as National Civil Services Day. But dear, can you tell me one question? Who is called the father of Indian civil services and why? Means, uh, I can give you some hint. He was some, some person before 1947. Yes. So this is celebrated in India uh, as a mark of appreciation to all the officers engaged in various public departments of the country. The theme was Vikasit Bharat aimed at empowering citizens and reaching the last mile. Yes, my dear. Then we have World Heritage Day, 18th of April, which is observed as World Heritage Day, also known as International Day for Monuments and Sites, just to raise the awareness about the importance of protecting them. It is a world heritage, my dear. Theme for this year is uh, Heritage of Change. It was chosen by UNESCO in 1982 for the first time, 18th of April. And <clears throat> this is the end of today's bulletin. I think you must have liked it. And if yes, if you are my first listeners, then it is just my humble request if you kindly press the subscribe button, which will be in the right bottom of my video. It will not cost you anything, but the only thing which I'll get is satisfaction. What satisfaction, sir? Satisfaction of reaching you guys instantly whenever my video is posted. Thank you, guys. I, I hope you guys are preparing well. Even if you have any problem regarding the preparation for GS or current affairs, your comments, your suggestions are required and are welcome. 
We will read them all and we'll try to incorporate all your suggestions in my next video. Till then, take care. Goodbye. Thank you.